What's up guys? My name is Marcus Huskins and thank you for joining me. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the new features added in Studio One version 4, and that is the chord track. All right, so let's take a look at the chord track. Now, first off, in order to view the chord track, you just have to click this little icon in the top here. And as you'll see over here, we now have this global track up top, which is essentially a harmonic roadmap of your entire song at any given point and duration. Just before we get too involved in things over here, I want to take a moment to kind of break this down and help everyone understand this a little bit better. And in order to do that, I'm actually going to take a look at the tempo track. Now, you might be asking, why are we taking a look at the tempo track? Well, essentially, because the theory or the philosophy of the way that the chord track works is actually quite similar to the tempo track, being that one, it's a global track, and two, it has the ability to affect all of the tracks in your song simultaneously, depending on how things are set up. So, for example, if we take a look at this song over here, which has a BPM of 68, and we take a look at each one of these tracks, you'll notice that A, the track is set to a time stretch mode, and B, the audio events themselves have a file tempo that's embedded into them. Now, what this means is that any adjustments I make to my tempo track, in this case, being at 68 BPM, because all of these audio events have the file tempo information, they are essentially going to follow. So I could, for example, take this, change my BPM to 77. We see this little icon that's indicating that there's some type of processing happening here. And of course, as expected, they will follow. 16 years later. And of course, I can bring this back to 68 and we're back to where we started. 16 years later. So if we take this same philosophy and apply it to the chord track, then we can really understand what's happening. So let's go ahead, let's just hide our tempo track for a moment over here. Now let's go ahead and let's bring in our chord track. Now one thing to note about the chord track is, is it functions very similar to, for example, the arranger track, in that we can draw in different sections over here, we can do the same thing with the chord track. I can double click and I can change the chords that I want to enter, I could change them to minor, I could change the intervals, etc, etc. Now we can also go to the previous chords and the next chords as well. And another thing that we can do is if you have a controller hooked up to your system, I could, for example, navigate over here and I could just simply play in a chord on my controller. So let's activate the instrument input and I'm just going to play a C major or a D minor and we can enter our chords directly that way. Okay, so now having said that, let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail and see how we can make use of it. Now, one thing to note right off the bat is that we have this follow on off mode and essentially what this allows us to do is enable or disable our chord track altogether. Now, another thing to point out is that the chord track is entirely non-destructive, meaning that it changes your audio and your instrument parts but it doesn't do it in a destructive way. And you can revert back at any point in time to your previous version. So let's go ahead, let's just turn this off for a moment and let's talk about some settings. Now in the same way that we set up a time stretch mode for anything to do with tempo following on a track by track basis, we have two new settings in the inspector. If you can't see that, just make sure that you click this eye over here or use the F4 shortcut. We can see that we have these two new modes over here, follow chords and tune mode. Now for the duration of this video, I'm going to leave follow chords set for the most part to parallel and the tune mode, this really has to do with the different type of source material that you're working with on your audio tracks. And for this case, I'm just going to leave it set to default. And in terms of follow chords, we have different ways in which the chord track can interact with each of our tracks. Let's go ahead and leave this set to parallel for now, but I do recommend experimenting with these different options. So essentially what this means is that in the same way that we can make tempo changes to our tracks and have them follow if Studio One is set up to do that, we can also do that on a track by track basis. Now this works with audio events and note data that's residing on instrument parts. Now the thing to point out here is that in order for this to work in the same way that we had to have a source file tempo embedded in the audio events so that they know how to follow a tempo track, we also need to have any chords embedded into the audio events so that they can properly follow the chord track. Now, how do we do this? Well, it's quite simple. For example, we could simply take this over here, 
head over to our audio menu, and I could go to detect chords. Now, once that happens, you'll notice that it's gone ahead and it's done a chord detection. Now, it's worth mentioning that we don't actually have to detect the chords on the instrument parts because Studio One has access to the note data that's residing on these instrument parts. Studio One will already have a pretty good idea of what the chords are. But with respect to audio parts, we have to go ahead and detect those chords. Now, once you've detected those chords, you'll notice that we have this information here on the bottom. If you're not seeing this, we just need to head over to our options and make sure that this option here, Show Chords on Events, is enabled. You notice when that's enabled, we can see all the chords. So let's go ahead here. I'm going to double click and let's open this in our music editor. And you'll notice that we have the same icon for chords available in the music editor. Now, in addition to that, we also have the ability to select these chords and directly edit them directly from within the music editor as well. So I could, for example, make any changes over here. And also, we could bring up the chord selector directly from the music editor as well. Now, one thing to note about chord detection is that you really want to go through and make sure that the chord detection that's happened has been done properly. Now, ideally, I want all of my chords to fall on a downbeat of each measure over here so that they're sitting properly against the global chord track. Now, another thing to note is that once you've detected chords, you have the ability to head over here and I can extract these chords to the chord track. So in terms of working with a piece of music that comes in, you could do a chord detection, edit them to make sure that they're all sitting on the proper downbeats, etc. That would be doing something like this. And then once you're happy with those results, simply by right-clicking any audio event, we can extract to the chord track. Now, I've already gone ahead and done this, so I'm not going to do that. So let's go ahead and remove these chords for a second. Now, another thing to point out is the difference between things like, for example, lead vocals and any harmonies and an instrumental mixdown of your track. So, for example, it's very easy for Studio One to determine what the chords are in this music reference file. Let's go ahead and play this. We have clear downbeats on all of these bars, which are indicating the chord changes. But with respect to something like a lead vocal, for example, if you're listening to this in isolation and Studio One is analyzing this in isolation, it's pretty difficult to determine what the chords would be. 16 years later in this young lady. So the best workflow when working with audio is to essentially export a mix down of your instrumental and then simply detect the chords based on that mix down. Now, once you've done that and once you've cleaned up those chords using the music editor, like we know we can do right over here, we can simply send those chords to the chord track by selecting this, extract a chord track, and then once the chord track has the chords that match our song, then if we wanted to embed these chords into any audio event, it's just a matter of clicking audio and applying chords from chord track. We'll do the same thing over here, audio, we'll apply chords from chord track, and now essentially everything is working as we need it to. We have the chords embedded on each of the audio events. And keep in mind that you can select multiple audio events to do this function, apply chords from chord track. So now that this is done, and now that we have our chord track and we have the proper chords, let's talk a little bit more about how we can use this. Okay, so like I mentioned, we have to basically give instructions to each track on how it's meant to follow the chord track. So in this case, I've gone ahead and I've set this follow chords mode to parallel. This, in general, will give you a really good result, but it's worth mentioning that if you don't want to detect the chords or you're working with any material where you might not have an instrumental mix down, that there's also some other options. So, for example, you could try Universal, which actually doesn't require you detecting the chords, but it aims to automatically snap any audio content to the scale based on the chord track. All right. So I know this is a lot that I'm throwing at you, but let's have a look at how we can use this. And keep in mind that with virtual instruments, we only have this one setting for follow chords versus the two settings that we have on audio tracks. So for virtual instruments, I currently have this set to parallel mode, but we have a couple other different modes available as well. Let's leave this on parallel for now, just so we can see how this works. Okay, so now that everything is set up, let's go ahead and let's turn our chord track on. And let's talk about some different potential use cases for how we can use this. Well, when in the production phase or a songwriting phase of a song, it's quite common to want to try different keys out. 
So for example, what happens if the singer said to me, hey, I know we've already recorded some instrumental stuff and I've already laid down a couple tracks, but this isn't feeling quite right for me. I'd like to try this in a different key. So if we listen to this section over here, years later in this young lady. what happens if the artist says, you know what, I want to try this whole thing down to semitones. So we could, for example, just shift, double click to select all of the chord events. Then I could go into transpose chords and I could bring this down minus two. Now, as soon as that happens, you're going to see a couple things happen here. First of all, you see a chord track icon that's happened on the instrument track. Now, what's actually happening here with anything to do with MIDI is that Studio One is actually transposing the note data. Now, let's go ahead here and take a look at these audio events. Now, you can see we have the time stretch icon that's indicated on all of these audio events. Because I transposed the chord track, Studio One is non-destructively transposed all of my audio events down to semitones. So let's go ahead and let's listen to our original key. Ten years later in this young lady. And now with our transposed data. Ten years later in this young lady. So pretty wild. We can have our whole entire song follow any global transposing that we do on our chord track. Now let's go ahead and let's bring our whole chord track back and we'll go to two. This will bring us back to our original key. Now what you're gonna see here is that everything, all of these icons have disappeared because there's currently no processing that's happening. Now let's talk about another completely different case. So let's say the artist says, you know what, I was feeling really happy when I wrote this song, but now I'm kind of not feeling that way. I want all of my D majors to in fact be D minors. So we could, for example, select all D chords, and then we could select over here and we could change these to a minor. Now watch what happens here. The chord track icon is appearing on these audio events and also this instrument track. Now let's go ahead and listen to this same section. Ten years later in this young lady. Versus. Ten years later in this young lady. Pretty wild, right? And then maybe they say, well, what about this part here? I want to try some different chords over here. So maybe they want to make this a minor. Keep in mind, this is all happening non-destructively. We see the chord track icon appear. And because we have all these different tracks set to follow the chord track in a certain way, and the chord track is globally active, Studio One is able to essentially change our entire song regardless of whether it's audio or virtual instruments. Let's really quickly take a look at something else. I'm going to go to another session over here. And in this session, we're simply dealing with an instrument part, which has note data. So when it comes to note data, like I said, Studio One has the ability to have direct access to the way that it detects any chords. So for example, I could go to my instrument parts and I could do two things here. First of all, I can detect my key signature. You notice that Studio One now has key signatures supported and recalled within each song. And the other thing that I could do is I could go and extract the chord track. Now, because it has direct access to all this note data, Studio One is able to pull all of these chords and extract it to the chord track. So let's have a quick listen over here. Keep in mind that we need to make sure that our tracks are set to follow. So this one over here, this is a bass track over here. Let's go ahead and let's set this to either narrow or maybe we can set this to bass and have a look at what happens as I change here. You'll notice that my note data is updating. Let's go ahead and let's set this to bass again. And let's make sure that this is set to follow. We'll set this to parallel. And I could, for example, make any changes to these chords. So I could just change this to a minor. And that's obviously changed. Let's go ahead and undo that. Now, another thing that I could do is I could just come in here and remove these chords altogether. And if I wanted to, I could simply say to Studio One, I want you to play this right across the board in C. And then this would essentially be just hopping through different inversions of a C chord. Now keep in mind, like I mentioned, the actual note data is being changed. So if I turn this off, you'll see that the note data is snapping back to its original position. So the chord track, an entirely new and unique way to be able to harmonically adjust your entire song within Studio One.
So that's using the chord track in Studio One version four. Having the ability to non-destructively adjust any audio or instrument track and have it follow is definitely something that opens up the doorways to having limitless creative potential. I hope you guys got something from this video. Again, my name is Marcus Huskins, and we'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.